What's poppin' internet? Welcome to another episode of the Synced Up Podcast, the show where we talk to you about news, games, and sandwich a little fun in between. I'm one of your hosts, Timothy Duro, and joining me this week is your boy, Michael Clare. How you doing on this cold-ass Sunday, Michael Clare? I'm sitting at a cool... Uh, ninety-eight point six degrees. Ninety-eight point six. You're you know? one Jack Daniels deep, so you're probably ninety-eight point eight. Ninety-eight point eight. Yeah. Ninety-eight point nine. A little warmth. A little warmth in there. Um, if you didn't know, the Midwest is going through a snowstorm right now, and we're getting mm-hmm. pummeled outside. Looks like a. Uh, it's Christmas. Blizzard. It. Yeah. Looks like Christmas in January. Mm-hmm. Um, but before it's February, bro. What? It's February, oh, bro. Oh shit, dude! I'm all messed up. We're fifty-two episodes deep. Um, today the we're last gonna, episode of the year. Yeah, last episode of the year. Your tech, cycle. Your cycle. Fiscal. We're like a fiscal year. Fiscal. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Today we're gonna talk about E3 trying to stage a comeback. CD Projekt Red being threatened by hackers. Anthem possibly getting axed finally. Who's shot? Post Malone coming to Pokemon, and we got several release dates to also talk about Some as well. Ones. Some but cool before ones. we get into that, a little bit of housekeeping for you. We got Sweet. two new impressions videos. Two. One. One on Little Nightmares 2, one on Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, mainly the Bowser's, Bowser's Fury much portion. Just Bowser's Fury. Yep, and if you are interested in our thoughts, our our reviews, our all of that stuff on Bowser's Fury and Little Nightmares 2, go over to youtube.com slash synced up podcast and you can find those over there. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, see, see, now I don't know how to see. I was trying to transition into the next part of the housekeeping, which is we're just on YouTube. Finish. But I see, I just talked to you about going to youtube.com slash synced up podcast. Mm. So we're over there. So yeah, you can check us out if you're in your audio feed on YouTube at youtube.com slash synced up podcast. Should hit one of those while you're there. While you're, yeah, while you're there. While you're there. You can go to the regular mm-hmm. podcast. Mm-hmm. But if you're on YouTube, you're watching the regular podcast, you're tired of watching YouTube um, because, you know, you don't got YouTube red. You can't close the app. I like how you slowly tradition from it used to being, you don't like our faces. To yeah. Being, you don't have YouTube red. Yeah, because well, they like our faces now. Aww, um, you don't have YouTube red, so you, you can't close it. You don't want to sit there and stare at the video the entire time. I don't. That, it, exactly. That sucks. It's, it sucks sometimes. So you can go to your favorite audio feed for podcasts, mm-hmm. search Synced Up Podcast, and look for the blue and white logo. We're if we there. are not in your favorite audio feed, you can let us know, um, and we we'll try and will try and fix that. Comment, whatever you got to do to let us know. We'll try and fix that. Mm-hmm. Um, you And new episodes go up in both of those feeds, Mondays, 7 a.m. Central mm-hmm. Time Zone mm-hmm. Gang. Mm-hmm. And I know we had some issues the past, not the past few weeks, but a few weeks ago yep. with some issues of not being able to hit that time. But it seems as if I, I, we've recorded. This will be our everything's fourth. Everything's looking good so far. This will be our fourth episode mm-hmm. since we've got the new CPU, and it seems like we have fixed that issue. Yes. So Everything looks good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Knock on wood, just like Jordan did. Um, you can also write into the show at SyncedUpPod um, at gmail.com with any questions, comments, concerns, games, or anything, and we might discuss them on the show if it's if it's mm-hmm. good enough. It probably will be. You know, we, we discuss them all. And if you don't want us to discuss it on the show, you just want to write in and tell us something, you can do that as well. Um, and if you don't want to do it through email, you can follow us on Twitter at SyncedUpPod to keep up to date with all the content that we do. Um, whether it's the impressions videos, we got a new podcast going up um, that we're we're trying to start here. We got Probably some other within a month. Within maybe, a month, we got yeah, hopefully we got some other stuff coming down the pipeline. But that's enough enough hold of the on, housekeeping. Wait, it's not Discord, bro. Oh yeah, did I skip the Discord? You yeah, did. join our community Discord. See, it's hard, you know. You, you talk about the impressions Stop videos, job. and and it's it's a little late. It's 9.56. Mm-hmm. It's snowing outside. I'm all off my game. Mm-hmm. But also, join our community Discord in the show notes or the YouTube description. There should be a that. link. Yeah, there should be a link. You can join our community Discord there. Um, mm-hmm. We have a fun time in there. Yeah. We do. We have a great time. Good, but let's nice place. let's let's talk about the actual... Some news. News. So we, we're going to start it off with E3 pushes forward with plans for a digital 2021 event. LOL. Game demos and keynotes are part of ESA's proposal, but it still needs backing of publishers. This is from Andy Robinson at Video Games Chronicle. E3 organizer the Entertainment Software Association, ESA, is pushing forward with plans for a digital event this summer, but it still requires the backing of major games companies. Um, the Electronics, the Electronic Entertainment Expo, otherwise known as E3, has mm-hmm. historically been at the center of the games industry's calendar, with companies often saving their biggest announcements for the annual Los Angeles launch, you know, launch, launch, LA. launch Angeles, LA event. However, due to the coronavirus pandemic, plans for a physical E3 in 2020 were canceled. When a proposed 2020 virtual show also failed to materialize, the ESA promised a reimagined E3 would take place in June 2021. According to E3 2021 pitch documents sent to games publishers and seen by VGC, the ESA has now outlined its proposals for this year's event, which would see three days of live stream coverage held during the previously announced dates of June 15th through the 17th. The ESA's intention is to hold multiple two-hour keynote sessions from games partners and awards show, a June 14 preview night, and other smaller streams 
games from games publishers, influencers, and media partners. The ESA also says it will allow partner companies to remotely stream playable game demos to the media across thousands of scheduled meetings with mm -hmm. one-to-one -one assistance from developers. Many companies have used similar on-demand streaming solutions during the pandemic to allow the media to remotely play their games for preview purposes. However, the E3 2021 plans still require the approval of ESA's membership, which is made up of the industry's biggest games companies and who have significant influence over the direction of the show. E3's longtime collaborator Jeff Keighley, who quit the show last year due to a disagreement over its direction, also launched a successful debatable summer games yeah. fest in 2020 keely confirmed a v video games chronicle over private message that the event would return this year and he said he would not be involved with e3 again it's unclear how many publishers have signed up for e3 2021's digital event though at least one major games company vgc spoke to indicated that it would continue to run its own separate digital showcase rather than paying the six-figure sums required to join e3 2021's schedule so this came out on monday or tuesday i can't remember yeah that e3 then. was going to be happening this year in a very different capacity. I imagine this event is pretty rock solid. I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to get axed like the last digital show because we got well, a big run up here. I don't know, man. The, considering you need the backing of these other uh, big developers to, I, I did, to I, help it float and yeah. stay alive. Eh. I just don't think they would come out and say it was happening if they didn't have enough ba backing from some at least. Maybe, but then you think they would announce it with them announcing that's still happening, right? The, Why would maybe. you save... Those announcements for later. I, I yeah, but they've never really ahead of they e ESA themselves have never ahead of time said who's going to be at E3. It's always that's been fair. up to the companies that, to do fair. so. But I do believe no matter what happens, I think it's going to happen. But I don't think it's going to be anywhere near what we're used to. I no. think you imagine just like before Microsoft started doing their own thing, mm -hmm. EA started doing their own thing, PlayStation left a few years ago. Yeah, those companies are going to continue to do their own things, and they might be around those two to three week mm -hmm. period in there um we haven't seen anything about this year's summer games fest with jeff keely has I mean, down like, the line who do you expect to be there um i have no clue like bethesda won't be there no because bethesda is owned by microsoft nowadays they so they're one of the bigger partners um, yeah it, like you, Square Enix you could do something yeah and I, I imagine you see the pc games people doing some stuff yeah. uh, who knows what actually is going to happen here no one really uh except maybe a couple of people mm -hmm. at vgc i guess a couple of people on the inside but us out here you know us little guys we don't know what's going on my expectations are still very low zero like, yeah I, this could get canceled again would not be shocked yeah and that's what i'm expecting honestly like, yeah I, I think guess you're right they wouldn't make this announcement without some something form of plan mm -hmm. but i i don't know i don't think you can have an exciting lineup with who yeah. we already know is probably not going to be there. I, I think we as a gaming community should get excited for that period of time, but not yeah. necessarily for I E3. Mean, I'm, I'm excited for Summer Game Fest, even yeah. though it wasn't a huge deal um, but now last we, year. But we've seen what it could do. It was still good. And, and it, yeah. it was its first year. And I think it'll and be... Keely easier. is good at learning from past events yeah. to make them better. Make them better. Obviously with the Game Awards. And I think it'll be easier to get Same bigger publishers it. on board here for yeah. Summer Games Fest by saying, hey, we did it last year. This was successful. This was mm -hmm. successful. We partnered with all these people. Um, You, you know, uh, uh, Microsoft plays ball a lot with Jeff Keighley, so you, yeah. you can see that. Nintendo also doing a little bit of stuff there. Um, we might see some good stuff from Summer Games Fest. Who knows what actually happens here at E3? Again, I don't think it will be that great. Because like you, they say here, it's still six figures to join the Just E3. Join. So you're not going to have any small companies that you might be excited about. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know. <sighs> yeah. It's just, yeah. Eh. Just get excited for that time because you know there's yeah, going to be announcements, but uh, not necessarily get excited for, for E3. It's not going to be the E3 of old. It sucks mm -hmm. that COVID took out E3 because E3 was such yeah. a beautiful event to have every year to spend like three mm -hmm. to four days just watching conferences yep. and all day and it was just such a fun time but I so mean, much announcement that time period even if E3 yeah is not doing but it, so that's true but it's not the same it isn't the it's same. not the same it's um, not to take off two days of work for e3 type yeah of experience kind of kind of sucks but uh w remains to be seen what exactly is going to happen here um all right now we all we got right now is speculation so get excited for mm. for that period of time but let's let's figure out what's going on there but until then um a little more of a negative story you know, yeah. you got to include a negative story every week. We got to have sucks. one. This kind of sucks. CD Projekt Red has been the victim of a huge cyber attack. This by Jack Webb at GamesRadar. CD Projekt Red has been the victim of a huge targeted cyber attack. The developer responsible for The Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk 2077 took to Twitter to announce the attack and share a ransom note from the hackers who are threatening to leak sensitive data if Project Red doesn't answer its demands. According to CD Projekt Red, its servers have been breached, but says that, to the best of our knowledge, no personal data from the players was stolen. In a statement on Twitter, the company explained, Yesterday, we discovered that we have been the victim 
victim of a targeted cyber attack due to which some of our internal systems have been compromised. It continues, an unidentified actor gained unauthorized access to our internal network, collect collected certain data, and left a ransom note. The ransom note, which was left in the Windows Notepad app, began by saying that they have been epically pwned, um, mm -hmm. or the company had been epically pwned. Despite the incident, the studio did manage to recover some of its files through a backup, but it cannot stop the hackers from selling or leaking the information they managed to obtain. The hacker's ransom note, which the company also shared on Twitter, contained threats that it would be releasing sensitive documents to the press that they have, quote, dumped full copies of the source code from your pre for or per force server for Cyberpunk 2077, Witcher 3, and the unreleased version, the unreleased version of Witcher 3. End quote. CD Projekt Red has been given 48 hours to contact the hackers and come to an agreement, but the studio announced a statement that it will be it will not be negotiating with them and has already contacted the authorities in an attempt to resolve the issue. It is worth noting that those hackers have come out since then and said that they have sold that data to a third party. Mm. That data hasn't came out, but that is what they have come yeah, out and that's said. That's where we're at right now. So this sucks. It does. I think CD Projekt Red handled it pretty good because um, if they had tried to handle this behind the scenes and yeah, maybe try to pay them off. Might get a little iffy. Yeah, and then, you know, it still comes out somehow anyways. Mm -hmm. It's just going to look bad on their part. I think this was the proper way to handle it. So be do I. About it, be like, we're just not going to do mm -hmm. anything with them. We have backups. Everybody else's personal data is fine. Uh, we'll take the blow on this. Yeah, you know. I 100% I agree there. Um, and this sucks for them. You know, say what you want about Cyberpunk 2077. No developer deserves this type of shit. No. This is not cool. We don't like to see this. We don't... Not at all. You know, this puts people at risk, especially with the employee information maybe that mm -hmm. they got. Mm -hmm. They say none of the, the user's information was got, which was, which is really good because, yeah. you know, CD Projekt Red but runs But sensitive documents to, um, you know, about the company, about mm -hmm. employees at the company, that's not good. Yeah. You know. So. It definitely could have been worse than this because they do run GOG. So, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of personal data could have been caught up in there. Could have been caught up in there, but they say that it hasn't, uh, to the best of their knowledge. So let's hope that that's true. I would think they're being honest. Yeah. Um, and we, we see what actually, I guess we have already seen what has come with this. I don't know if in, this data ends up coming out by this third party that bought it and it ends up being crazy. I doubt it. Who knows? But this, this is not the way to go about, um, you being pissed about Cyberpunk 2077. Cause you imagine yeah. that's probably what oh, this I epically sh pwned. Sure this sounds some like some 16, 17 year old kid, mm -hmm. um, pissed about Cyberpunk 2077 and just being dumb. Yeah. Um, being dumb. Yeah. Just stupid. Yeah. 100%. Um, the future of all of that remains to be seen. And so does the future of Anthem. Anthem mm -hmm. next future depends on the uh, Anthem next, not the next future next. That's the update. Like that's worth noting just in case yeah. Anthem next future depends on EA's upcoming internal review. The future of Anthem is at stake This is from Matt Kim at IGN. The fate of Anthem hangs in the balance, depending on how an internal review of the reboot goes. That's according to a new report, which says there's a chance EA expands the Anthem Anthem next team or shelves the game altogether. There's my burp. That spaghetti caught Every up to week. me. It caught up to me. In a new report from Bloomberg, EA executives will, will review the latest version of Anthem Next later this week. Depending on how the project is progressing, EA will continue to back and grow the Anthem Next team or abandon the project. Anthem Next was set to be a redo of sorts for Anthem, Bioware's live service action RPG, which quickly lost traction with players. Bioware handed Anthem to Bioware Austin, which specifically works on live projects like Star Wars The Old Republic. This isn't to say Anthem Next has been officially canceled. That remains to be seen following EA's internal review, and if the project is shaping up to satisfaction, um, the dev team will be expanded to pursue the project further. Um, who knows what happens from this? Yeah. Uh, so, do you think with the failures of Anthem, Avengers, um, just the two off the top of my head, that live service games are going to be... On the outs? Yeah. Maybe. I mean, we're starting to... See, we we kind of see that. I, that. I know the one we know is on the horizon is Harry Potter, right? Mm-hmm. Like, live service games never going out. Go, no, going away. no, not at all. Uh, but I'm just saying, do, do you think... In terms of critical response... They haven't been the greatest, their track record. Yeah. But in terms of sales numbers, they mm -hmm. do bukus of cash. So I, I don't foresee them going anywhere. And yeah. I don't know if I foresee them getting better. I don't, because, you know, I, I would have thought they'd been getting better up to this point. But it seems like it every seems time like a new one comes worse. out, yeah. yeah. Every time a new one comes out, it's the same issues, it's the same mm -hmm. problems. And it, it's just a repeat, well, you know, rinse I, and, and I repeat. I think it comes down to which model you focus your development on. If you're initially making your model about making money instead of the consumer experience, mm -hmm. obviously you can tell. Like something like the, uh, you know, Avengers and I, I don't know about Anthem, I didn't play it. Yeah. But it felt very empty and there wasn't a lot of gameplay stuff, but the shop was up. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you, you have all these uh, live service things that yeah, it's are a bit irritating and, you know, are doable if the game's good, but... When the lack of gameplay is there, it's just worse altogether. Yeah. So, 
it remains to be seen. We'll have to see what stuff in the future. I know Gotham Knights is looking to possibly be a style game like that. Yeah. You got Harry Potter coming in the future. Uh, Destiny updates. You imagine there's another thing coming with Destiny. Yeah. Uh, the division I mean, Destiny people. seems to do all right, though. Yeah, but it, it's still like the same thing. Like, when you look into that, like, yeah, community, yeah. it's always the same shit. Always mm-hmm. the same problems. Will they ever get better? I don't know. Remains remains to be seen. Will Anthem make it through this? I hope so. I was one of the people who actually enjoyed Anthem. Mm-hmm. I, I very much liked it. Jordan as well. He he liked Anthem with me. The, Anthem has its fair share of problems. The dialogue holds no rapport over the story at all, which yeah. sucks. Uh, because that Bioware is used is normally known for making your choices matter a whole whole lot, which mm-hmm. they really don't at all in Anthem. Yeah. That makes a little bit of sense. We're talking about a live service game with multiplayer thing that kind of makes it hard, but still, that that was the problem there. Um, there was a massive lack of content. It was very shallow. But that being said, the combat was mm-hmm. so so amazing. Playing with your friends, running around, flying around, just killing stuff, learning about priming and 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 all that stuff for the combos was really cool. It was such a yeah. fun experience. But again, there was there's a lot, a lot of problems with that game. So I hope they make it through this and Anthem Next can come out and maybe mm-hmm. we can jump back in, um, get Jordan, me, Chance, get a squad going, jump back in and play some Anthem if this ends up coming out and hopefully they do okay. Uh, but if it gets canceled and that's what they feel like they need to do, EA has been known to do that and I wouldn't be surprised if they end up canceling this. Oh, I wouldn't this. be at all. Yeah, I wouldn't I like be at all. how the, the two options were either expand the team a or lot cancel. or cancel the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Either, Interesting choices. Either rule out of control or say, psych, we're not doing it. Yep. Exactly. Until then, let's hop off of the negative news. Let's get mm-hmm. on some of this positive news. Hell Post yeah, Malone yeah. is coming to Pokemon. We have a trailer here for Post Malone's concert coming to Pokemon on February 27th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 6 p.m. for us. Was this in your 2021 bingo book? Was not in my 2021 bingo Damn, book. VTuber, out, VTuber Post Malone. Mm-hmm. But... I will say it is a free event that we can just watch on YouTube. So mm-hmm. we will probably be watching this considering live streaming our reactions yeah. to it. All right, Jordan. Show us the trailer. Because, I mean, 6, 6 p.m. February 27th, depending on what day that lands on, we mm-hmm. might be able to live stream our reactions to that. So we we'll get back to you. But play this trailer. Let me think. That's going to be on a Saturday evening. It's crazy. I think. Yeah, well, we should be able to do that. We could. Yeah. I'd be down to watch a Post Malone Guess concert live. Make sure, make sure this stuff's not muted, Jordan, just in case. It's not? Okay. It's you. Uh, Saturday the 27th I believe that's a Saturday so Post Malone talking about you know oh I got fans thank you for being here gosh it feels so good I love this guy I love Post too so good. boom VTuber Post Malone what the fuck man virtual concert got. with Post Malone February 27th 7pm Eastern the, Standard there's Time there's a lot of Pokemon stuff that should be going down on that day mm-hmm. or around that day uh, maybe maybe Friday. Jordan panicking. <laughs> panicking. <laughs> Jordan's like, no. <laughs> but uh, for uh, there should be a lot of Pokemon stuff on that day. So yeah. the when we record on Sunday after that concert, I might have some good news. Oh, you know, I'm gonna have some stuff to talk yep. about, baby. I'm gonna be so Apparently, excited. there should also be some other news about more concerts coming to Pokemon. Katy Perry is supposed yeah. to be doing a Pokemon thing, so we'll we'll be able to see more stuff about future concerts. Concerts and gaming starting to be the thing. You know, you had yeah. you had your Roblox concert with Lil Nas X, which is was cool. Be a, uh, Travis Scott Fortnite was cool. It, it really is. I don't know. I feel like companies are getting less afraid to kind of collaborate. Do with cool stuff. Figures yeah. And stuff. Which is always cool. You know? It's cool for me because, you know, as a kid growing up, and I assure you experience this, experience this as well, we were born on that precipice of, like, growing up in elementary school and, and going into high school, mm-hmm. playing games was, like, taboo almost. And, yeah. and and people made fun of you for it, and it was hard to find people that really enjoyed those as well. And, and everything felt so... if you've played any game besides, like, Call of Duty. Yeah. Um, um, Madden. Felt like so that. hard to branch out and talk to people about games, mm-hmm. and it sucked. And you got made fun of, and you got bullied for that type of shit. But nowadays... It seems like it's the opposite, where if you aren't yeah. playing Fortnite and you aren't playing those games, that you are the one who's yeah. like aloof, um, which is completely a, a massive contrast to what it was like for me growing up. But this and type it, of shit and makes you see it that so much with a game like Pokemon, right? Where mm-hmm. right now Pokemon's almost as big as it's ever been. We talked about Sword and Shield selling better than um, everything up until uh, what was it, Gold and Silver, right? Yeah, that's like twenty years of games, mm-hmm. and it did better than all those. Pokemon's on the rise, and that used to be a game that was super nerdy, yeah. and you can't do anything about it, but now you got adults Everyone's who are playing like it. getting the Happy Meal stuff. Yeah. You got It's just such a big thing now, and, and you it's don't great. have to be afraid of loving Pokemon. Yeah, like, or just loving games in general. Yeah. Um, I, I love seeing this growth. This growth has allowed for ridiculous amounts of games to come out. Uh, companies to pump out more and more games consistently. They're, mm-hmm. they're not as spread out. You got all kinds of cool indie titles that have been able to come up, Super Meat Boy, yep. um, things like that that have really kickstarted this crazy indie scene. 
gaming events are this massive thing to just be joyful and excited about. Yeah. The world has really come a long way in terms of gaming, and we're in a much better spot now than we were when we were growing up, and, mm -hmm. and that's something that I love to see. And this type of shit only makes that that yeah. taboo go away even more, um, which I – oh, bump the mic. Um, I'd love, love, love to see this. I do too. So two release dates we got to talk to you about here. I don't got any new stories, but Kingdom Hearts PC um, is coming out. It's coming to PC, and it's an Epic Game Store exclusive. comes out on March 30th. Yeah. This is a solid cop for the Epic Game Store. Yeah, I think you can get um, the final mix with 1 and 2. Yeah, you can like get 1.5 and 2.5. You can get a lot. For like 60 bucks, mm -hmm. and then KH3 is also 60 yeah. bucks, which is kind of eh, because the game's like 30 bucks everywhere mm -hmm. else. So, but I mean, it's if someone's on console, I'm sure they're going to make that money. Yeah. First, uh, PC, first bad. time it's on PC, Epic Game Store making an exclusive. That's an incredible get for them. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people get upset about that type of stuff, but for oh, Epic Games, I don't know why. yeah, for Epic Games, this is a uh, really incredible for them. And also as well, the, the modding community around Kingdom Hearts might be bullying. I know. I thought that was exciting too. Uh, give me, that was the, some of the first things. People give me Bernie about. Sanders, uh, mitten summon, you know, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> You'll see a lot of dumb stuff like that. There's going to be a lot it's of, gonna be exciting, Thomas, the tank engine. Mm -hmm. You know, memes. You, 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 uh, you're going you're gonna to love to see it. One more release date, though. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart has finally got a release date of June 11th. This I'm is excited. what Sony calls the launch window, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should ask uh, Microsoft about theirs with Halo Infinite. Yeah, that's know? fair enough. But they delayed theirs. I guess In their so. defense, Rift they, Apart has always been touted as this. launch window. June 11th, not really a launch window, if you ask me. Um, I mean, it's a little later than I expected, Yeah, which is good. Not good, which is bad. Well, I don't know. I guess it's, I don't know. Depending on your perspective. I don't know. I think it's bad because, like, what if you had, what are you going to have in between Spider-Man and, um, what was it, Bloodborne? Yeah. And now or Demon Souls Demon remake. Souls, my bad. And that. You got a whole six or seven months there. What, well, I don't know. Was Did we ever figure out if Kenna was Sony exclusive? I guess we didn't. Um, I don't I don't know what was in between. Jordan, can you look up if Kenna Bridge of Spirits is a Sony exclusive, please? Yeah, because that might be it. I can't think of anything else that was like, <sighs> yeah, need to play on Sony. Destruction All Stars, my bad. There you go, <laughs> big one, big one there. That's a huge get. That's a huge get. But can't it, wait for this though. Yeah, oh, me too. It it looks so good. The trailer, every trailer we've yeah. seen just makes it look better. I'm gonna be playing the shit out of this game when it comes out. It looks like it's gonna use up all the, of those components, just running every particle on the screen. Yeah, 100. percent So I'm excited for that. Timed console. Okay. okay, so time console exclusive. So it would be Kenna. on PlayStation first. Yeah, but Kenna is... doesn't have a rock solid date. It's still it just no. It's still oh, just right. first half of 2021. So. Well, I thought it was in March. No, I looked Maybe it up. I looked it. at the I looked at the release calendar, and Kenna is okay. currently listed as an well, announced date. I'm still date. excited for that too. Yeah, and you know, Tim, it's not on here, but I feel like it wouldn't be a week of the synced up podcast if we didn't at least talk about it. Oh, I pulled it off, so we didn't have to talk yeah, about well, it. And you're gonna bring bit, it up anyway. I, I need it. In my you life. can't have an episode of the podcast without talking about video games being adapted into movies and news happening around that i removed Thank it off you. the dock so we didn't have to do it um my per my request it's back on yeah now, so uh pedro pascal has been casted mm -hmm. as joel Famous and for now playing the middle i can't remember the girl's name but she was casted uh, as ellie she's from game of thrones she was she played that little, little mormons yeah she, the one that gets killed oh I guess. Well, fuck it. Spoiler. Spoilers for Game of Thrones. All right, for the next ten seconds. The one who gets killed by the giant. Okay, that girl. She's been casted as Ellie. Um, Wait, hold up. Doesn't hmm? doesn't Pedro Pascal get killed by? Huh? The, wait, who's the giant? Pedro Pascal was not in Game of Thrones. Yes, he was. <laughs> what? No, he wasn't. Hold up. Wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He plays. Yeah. Uh, he plays that dude. No, he gets killed by that dude's not. The little girl the gets giant? killed by an actual giant. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he gets killed by just the dude who's big. Wrong. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll save that for another show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Pedro Pascal has been cast as Joel. Game of Thrones, so. There's a movie he plays in that's post apocalyptic that I would like to watch to see mm -hmm. if he can fit that role. A lot of people say, watch this movie if you want to see Pedro Pascal in the Last of Us style thing. Yeah. I think it's an okay uh, casting. It remains to be seen if it's going to be good or not, but mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to it. I'll say that much. I'm, I'm cool with it. I think it's a fine casting. And, and one more thing Jack Black has been casted as ca Claptrap. And I'm just saying all we need is Dwayne the Rock Johnson and it's the Jumanji movie, and it's just the Jumanji movie <laughs> uh, so there you go yeah. there's your film gaming crossover Dwayne so Johnson like, as as the brick. berserker as, what's his oh name? it would be brick brick oh yeah. fuck Dwayne Johnson you know would like, he right? would play such a good brick yeah, exactly. cuz he is the buff dude fuck yeah. it might be happening it might be Jumanji movie too what the hell that's crazy like who okay. else is it going to be yeah wow all right there you have it we had to talk about it Thank it's you. there we had to talk about it mike yes sir this next section of the podcast 
is, called This is Week it, in Gaming. Yeah, what, what is it? It's a section of the podcast it? where we yep. talk about the historical releases in. You guessed it. No, wait, hold up. This Week Let in me, Gaming. Uh, you didn't even give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about February 14th, Valentine's Day, baby. Valentine's. Twisted Metal in 2012 that's on Valentine's it. What Day. What a romantic game. You know, but, well, that's not even the original. Yeah, I know. What a crappy day for video games. Yep. Yeah. What, what's up with February 14th and not having any good releases? Yeah. You can, too, too busy loving yeah, too busy I guess that's fair. I guess that's fair. Look. Valentine's Day, maybe not a good game to re- release games. A day to release games. I don't know. February 15th, though, in 2012, you have the release of the PS Vita wow. and its launch title, Uncharted Golden Abyss. A classic. A cl- Everybody honestly, had one of these. No, they didn't. Greg Miller would burn us at the stake right now for shit talking it, but PS Vita was not that great. I'm not going to I liked Mod Nation Racers, though, but I like Mod Nation Racers on the PS3. I would... M- well, I don't want to say murder somebody because, you know, it this is, is a public is. forum, but I would do some... Slick nasty things for a, another Mod Nation Racers. I love Mod Nation Racers. Go play Destruction All Stars, bro. That is not the same. Don't even hit me with that, dude. Me- I, was, I will say about the PS Vita, interesting community. Some devoted people to that. Mm-hmm. Some titles are still coming out on it. Yeah. Um, interesting community. Mm. Look into it. Yeah, look into it. Okay. Metro Exodus came out in 2019 on February 15th. That is a good game that I highly recommend. I recommend all the Metro games. Uh, off my radar. Really. Yeah, they, these are good. I like them a lot. Like it would very it atmospheric. Would, it would take like one of them hopping on a game pass. New. They're all on there. I think. Yeah, I, I know, but I'm not. <laughs> I play what's new, so I can. Well, I can okay, it. fair enough. February 16th, you got Street Fighter Five, Layers of Fear, and Rainbow Moon all on the same day, day in 2016. Wow, Ra- Layers of Fear was 2016. Yep, and Rainbow Moon actually a solid game. One of those. Uh, um, Earthbound style games, mm-hmm. and I actually like it, which is surprising for those type of games because I usually don't. Street Fighter Five still getting updates. A uh, bit big, big yep. season five update or whatever, something like that. Something like that. I can't remember. Uh, good fighting game. Yep. February seventeenth, you have Siphon Filter in nineteen ninety nine. Of course, a classic would mm-hmm. be. Remi- You've never heard of Siphon Filter. Nope. How Explain are you it. on <laughs> the console team for Five Nine Gaming, and you've never heard of Siphon Filter, Jordan? You've never heard of Siphon Filter. You realize it's siphon you, filter. You lived an experience of life that is quite different than everybody else's. Yeah, but like, was it's this one siphon of the games filter? you would go to Blockbuster and pick up and play seven? No, times? it came out in '99. It's just like an iconic game that most people who know about games and history know. Siphon filter. I know. Am I capping, I know bro? Every other game on this list. Wow, what the fuck? Okay, 2002 NBA Street Volume that, One. That's one that uh, bring up in the comments or something. Yeah, let, let us, us know because is, is Tim. Tri- is he capping? Is he tripping? Not got firm cap. NBA Street 2002. That's a classic. That's a great game. All of them are great. Mm-hmm. And then you, you know, you got to include this classic. MX Unleashed in 2004. You play that? I don't know. Probably. You remember MX vs. ATV, bro? Was it on GameCube? Was that one? I don't know. I can't, I don't know. I can't remember. I, I'm, yeah. I the one MX where you hit the ATV. ghost wall and it would launch you? Mm, you would hit the know. edge of the map. It would be open world. You'd be Dude, I ATV. cannot tell you which one I played. MX vs. ATV. Everybody's played that. The one where you and hit it the launches you. That's um, yeah, MG. dude. That's such a ATV. classic game. Okay, okay. Completely different from this game, though. Street Fighter Four came out in two thousand and nine. Look at that big ass gap between four and five. Seven years. Oh, look at the bigger gap. What's the bigger gap? The next one. Halo Wars Two in twenty seventeen. That's eight years. Eight years of what? You said that was a big gap. Oh no! Between Street Fighter Four and Street Fighter Five, Mike. The, I didn't see the number you said. I, I saw between MX Unleashed and Street Fighter Four. No, no, no. Street Fighter gotcha, Four gotcha, gotcha. and Street Fighter Five was a seven-year mm-hmm. gap. Halo Wars Two I mean, did, yeah. did come out in 2017, though. I think recently they did come out and say that they weren't going to make another one, which is worth noting. I February 18th, nothing of note really came out. February Tragic. 19th, the iconic Crisis Three in 2013. Mm-hmm. The can mm-hmm. your PC run this game? Mm-hmm. Um, you gotta love it. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance also came out on the same day. A game. I'm not into Metal Gear games, but I like Metal Gear Rising and Revengeance. It is a action RPG Metal Gear game. I feel like that's a classic Tim trope, right? Have you heard it? Huh? Have, it? Have you heard of it? I've heard of it. I haven't yeah. played it. I played but the demo and then played the game. Where you'll play, there'll be like a, a long living franchise and you'll just play one offshoot of it. Yeah. And be like, yeah, it's phenomenal. I don't know about the rest <laughs> of the series, but. <laughs> it's good. I like it. February 20th, you have, 20th, Sonic and the Secret Rings in 2007. If my brother mm-hmm. was in here, he'd be jumping for joy. This is a classic Wii game. I mm-hmm. played the shit out of Sonic and the Secret Rings back in middle school. Oh, is this the werewolf one? No, Did that's Sonic know? Unleashed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sonic and the Secret Rings was bullying. Oh, and honestly, I might, because we got the Wii U, I might find it. What was it. the cover? Huh? Describe the cover to me. It's Sonic and the Secret Rings. Is there some fire? Bring it up. Just, it, just bring it up, Jordan. Like a, a darker background. It's Sonic and the Secret Rings. Bring up the image so, so Mike Does can see it. Does it look like it. a Lord of the Ring? No. What? Kind of, no. Kind of box? Throw it up. Is it just Sonic in front of a Lord of the Ring shot? Yeah, that's all we need. That's all I need. 
Saga Secret Rings, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of that's kind of. This game smacked. I do remember this game. This game was so good. Um, cracked down the original in 2007 on the same day. What? What's up? What's up I with that? Came out the same day as Sonic and the Secret Rings. Yeah, crazy, crazy, isn't it? And then in 2015, wow. The Order 1886, a game which I liked, which mm-hmm. will never get a sequel because it performed so poorly, mm-hmm. but I enjoyed it. I thought it was kind of cool. And that's it for this week in gaming. You guessed it. Yeah, you get we we all we did it. What, on the thing yep you guessed it <laughs> whose turn is it to think of a character whose turn is it uh give it to me okay let me let me start thinking oh wait you wait you gotta think of a character yeah well, I'm who did, what was last week uh i don't know we got i was i was stumbling it's been a long week let me think of a character real quick. okay let me get my zen i just want to make sure we're alternating here mm. what should we do in the future But that would be would hard to do. I don't know. We'd have to we'd have to record them separately. I'd have to leave the room. Yeah, it'd be like it Family was, Feud. It, yeah, something like that. Something like that. Okay, okay. Burr. Go for it. Um, is this character? Is this? Ca- <clears throat> I'm not gonna project it. I'm not gonna you know. Don't, don't project. Do That's not the word. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I need the word before I can. I'm not going it to. Just, you. I'm not. Focus on what I'm what, thinking. No, of, look. Not what when you about. the word where you do something you, to someone could, and they don't. You don't want to do it to him, like that's like a thing, where you're like, I don't want to put you through that. Yeah, but there's like a word for it, one word. I'm not gonna put that on you. I don't know. No, there's a singular word for uh, when you don't want to put someone through something. You're like, I don't want to. We'll talk about this later. No, I need it. No, you know okay. what? Burden? No, it's Wait, not burden. burden. It's not burden. I keep wanting to say project, but that ain't no, it's it. Okay, bro. Just move on. No, dude, I need you, you it. Can do this. Hold up. Okay, the word. Deep, deep then. I'm going in deep. Into your soul. I don't, subject. I don't want to subject them to ah, that. Subject. Boom. Thank you. All right. Wait, is that on. spelled the same way as subject? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's red and red. Red and read. English. Bro. Lead and lead. Why is why, have you seen the meme? It's like why is red pronounced read and you know what I'm saying? That's no, right. And lead yeah. lead. I can't remember. And tomb is tomb and not. Ask your first question. Tomb. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is this character part of one of the mainline franchises? Like like a, what the hell, dude? What does that mean? What, what is this character a part of an exclusive of the big three? Is what I meant to ask. You know when it's oh the big three now. Yeah okay, God I'm dumb. Continue. <laughs> One is this character part of a mainline franchise? Like mm, uh, probably. <clears throat> if I said no, it'd be it'd be real hard. Is this character playable? Uh, like can you play them? Yes. Yeah. What else would playable mean? Well, come on. Like he he got played. <laughs> come on, that doesn't make him play a bull. Like someone who's stupid, you think he could steal their money? Like take like their money. That per- that's gullible. That not- was like you when you bet ten bucks. Oh, um, we're not talking rate. about that. You were dude. Playable that's right completely then. different. Okay. I should have violated you like that. Yeah, you whatever. Just gave me ten dollars. All right. Um, is this character? You, you said yeah, right? That they are. Played? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Is this character part of an indie game? No. Cool. I like me better when <clears throat> I don't want to get claimed. Um. Is this character a part what of a mean? game in my top fifty? Uh, can I see your top fifty? <laughs> you need to see my, out? my entire top fifty. I don't think you. I don't think he is. All right, I'm bringing out my top fifty. Bringing it out. Bringing it out. Boom. Uh, boom. We need to find some theme music to overplay while we do this. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna look away so you don't pass yeah, it, and then yeah, I'm like, oh, it's look. one of those games. Oh, actually. Hmm. Scooby Bop and Boot Pow. He's looking through. He's looking through my top 50. Okay, okay. After looking at your top 50, yes. He is? Okay. That's worth noting. He is in your top 50. He's in my top 50. That's, that's, that's. Yeah. Playable in your top 50? Yeah. No. Okay, so it's not part of the main. Um, Let's think about it. So, uh, has this character been in a movie? Yes. Is this character blue? No. Okay. Are you going for Sonic? Yeah, it's going for Sonic the Hedgehog. So this character has been in a movie, though. Yeah. Hmm. 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 That's a that's a that that narrows it down a decent amount. That should amount. narrow it down a lot. That sh- that narrows it down a decent amount. So I don't have any but Tomb Raider games. I don't have any. I do have Pokemon. I do have a one singular Pokemon game. Um. So is this character in a Pokemon game? No. Okay. And that one kind of is a. Uh, I guess. Big three. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Even though, you know, yeah, Game Freak situation aside, yeah, still second, exclusive. Second to, party, the whole thing. Exclusive. Whole conversation. Um, so if it's not Sanic, so you got Sanic, you have 
Um, uh, Detective Pikachu. You have the Warcraft movie. Um, you have Assassin's Creed. I don't. Do I have any of those in my top fifty? No, I don't. Um, oh, oh, is this is this character? Um, oh, you would have known that, right? Though maybe I don't know. So, is, so this character is in a movie. Um, is this movie that this character's in? Was it? Did it come out? Oh, no, because I don't know the exact date that movie came out. Is this character this movie? Is the character portrayed by Jake Gyllenhaal in the movie that he is in? No. <laughs> okay, it's not Prince of Persia. <laughs> <laughs> So if it's not I Prince of Persia, I don't have any Warcraft related stuff. Detective Pikachu, you have Sanic Ball. Um it's cause, so it's not a Pokemans. You got the Tomb Raider movies. You got the and it's not Mario cuz it's not the part of the big uh-huh. 3. What other video game movies are there? Um I guess Ready Player 1. Is the movie they're in Ready Player 1? No, was that the movie you were no, thinking of? No, but pro- they're probably in there. Like they Honestly, might be. I don't know. They, they might, might be. be. Okay, they might be. But that wasn't the movie you were thinking no, of. No, that okay. was not the movie. That's worth noting. Okay, so that's eight. I think or for nine. future clause, anytime someone asks, are they in a movie? Ready it's not one. Should not count. Yeah, yeah. should be excluded. Because I think even like Borderlands is in. Yeah, like every Borderlands. everything is in that. Um, damn, other video game m- movies, huh? This is good. Well, I'm 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 a little You're putting in some work. I'm a little lost. Um video game movies. Video game. You got Castlevania and The Witcher, but those are shows, not movies. Mm-hmm. I agree. You have fucking Damn, like I don't even who when where. Um Would you like a, a hint? Yeah. You I don't, me to throw you a bone? Sure. Uh just Go over what you've already thought. Go over what I already it's, thought. It's not anything that you haven't already thought. Warcraft? <sighs> Are you asking me if it's Warcraft? <laughs> You're not. You wouldn't pick a fucking Warcraft character. The only one I know is Garrosh Hellscream. Um, it's not Garrosh Hellscream. <laughs> Come on, Mike. You, you want to find out? <laughs> it's definitely not Garrosh Hellscream. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Garish. But his last name's Hellscream. It's Garush. It's not Garouche. Yeah. It's Garsh. Garsh um, on it. So it's not Warcraft. It's not something I've not already thought of. I'll be, I'll be, what? I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, uh, Tomb Raider. I thought about Tomb Raider, but. You did. I don't got a Tomb Raider in my top 50. I don't. Tomb, like, Laura Croft is not in my top 50. Not at all. Yeah, you're Laura. right. I always say Laura, and people people flame Laura. me immediately. It's like it's up there with you calling Sheik a he. Ah, Jesus. He does that constantly. Dude, okay, stop. <laughs> well, are you ashamed <laughs> of that one? A little embarrassed because of that don't one? Don't come at me. Okay, so it's not Tomb Raider. It's not. It's not something I haven't already thought of, bro. Like, okay. Um, is you the, listed off a bunch of movies, and it was in that movie you listed. What? Yeah. Do, the only ones... Oh, yeah. The only ones w- that I listed was Tomb Raider, Warcraft, and Detective Pikachu. But it's, they're was not... Was that really it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, that wasn't it. What was the other ones that weren't it? Because I said Sanic. Um, oh, I'm done. Is this character in... Is this a Sonic character? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's not... It's just not there Sonic. There we go. It's just not Sonic. We made some progress. Okay. Um, is this character got an iconic meme? Probably. Okay, so it's not definitely. So it's not Knuckles. Um, uh, I guess uh, Knuckles might be in the movie. I'm not. Oh, he's not in that. He, he's not, not even in that movie. Sure. He could have been one of the echidnas we said at the beginning. Yeah, but I didn't ask about them. The characters in the movie, but that's definitely Miles Tails Prowler though. Is this character yellow? No. It's, an, oh, it's not Miles Tails Prowler. Who else is fucking? Who's, is it? Is this character evil? Yes. He picked Eggman. <laughs> Are you I hate guess? Eggman. Is it Eggman? Yeah, it's Eggman. <laughs> How many was that? 11? That was uh, 14. Oh, 14? 14. All right, whatever. That was pretty good. <laughs> Eggman. Um, Dr. Eggman. Yeah, I figured when you led with playable, it'd, take you, it'd, it'd make it a bit harder. I just I forget that you can play 
you can you can play as like all those dudes in yeah. in various offshoot and, and, games. Because you have uh, what is it, Sega Superstar Tennis? Yeah, that, yeah. That, you can play them in that. When you said I was actually thinking Mario and Sonic at the Olympics games, when I yeah, said yes, that was the first game I thought of was like, oh, Sega Superstar Tennis was the game in my top fifty. But then I is, is this character blue? And then for some reason decided yeah. to completely skip past Sonic for the rest of the fucking. Yeah, thing. I was like, oh man, he's gonna get stuck. Wait, yeah. nope, you did it, you did it. All right, we did it, Doctor Eggman. Doctor Eggman, decent pick. I almost went with Dr. Wily, but I figured yeah. that would be too hard for you. Um, I, would you have gotten Dr. Dr. Wily's from Mega Man, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would have maybe could have, but yeah, maybe. Because I, I, I know that. Dr. Wily, but that would have I would have been able to do it yeah. in 20, I don't think. Um, good next good round. Yeah. Solid round. Solid round. No no baloney. No, yeah. Um, no no malar- malarkey. Malarkey. Shenanigans, as this, they say. Next section of the podcast, reader mail. I guess. You can it. write in. Yeah, you guessed it. Um, you can get your questions read on the show. Uh, by writing in to syncedupod at gmail.com just like Fielding did. Aloha, homies. Aloha. I'm glad I got to hear from last week's sponsor of the show, Socks. I personally use them and love them. I forgot we did that. I have a pair with my dog's face on them. Anyway, my question is this. What is your quote, don't get me started topic? What could you Mm. rant about for a long time? Mine is the lack of helmets with professional snowboarding and skateboarding. It boggles my mind how people will just wear a beanie when grinding down a 10 foot or a 10 plus foot step rail or 10 plus step, I guess, rail. I don't know why I keep trying to include mm-hmm. words in here. The only reason they don't wear helmets is due to peer pressure. hundred percent. I could go on and on. Love the show. Keep it popping, man. Y'all know me. I got a lot of these. <laughs> I got a lot of these. Don't yeah. get me started topics where I will talk for a long, long time. Not always in a negative way. Not always in a negative way. It's more of a mm-hmm. don't get me started because if I get started, the cat is eating the food on the counter right now. Yo, he hungry. <laughs> because if I do get started, I, feel different. I know I will be talking for a very, very, very long time. Sorry about which one? Just things. Oh, it's not, just, it's not always negative. Is your answer? Yeah, not always negative. So, you don't got anything specific. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out a few of them. So mm-hmm. first and foremost, what the Chinese government does to the uh, Uyghur people over mm-hmm. in China, that uh, that gets me going That's immediately. Mm-hmm. Um. Space, space, yeah. You bring up space, it's over. Mm-hmm. You bring That's up time, not in a negative way. Yeah, not in a negative way. way. You bring up time, it's over. Mm-hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be talking about that for years. You know, yep. I won't stop. Video games, obviously, but mm-hmm. that's that's a given. Uh, obvious. Same with uh, certain movies. You want to talk about metaphorical context and mm-hmm. things that are like in movies. I'm gonna be going for a while. Um, what else? Can you think of any of mine that I haven't thought of like already? Uh, usually when it comes to like. I, I agree with movies, but Board more games. specifically, like watching WandaVision, right? Mm-hmm. Theorizing mm-hmm. on like possible endings. Like I could totally be like, you, like someone could come up to me and be like, yeah. hey, did you watch this week's WandaVision? I'm like, don't I'm like, get me started. Bro. Bro. <laughs> you, got, you got time? You got time? <laughs> Have you watched it and how in are you? I need to know where your levels are yeah. so I know what to do right Have now. Have you watched all 23 movies and the X-Men movies? Okay, <laughs> no, not the X-Men movies? Okay. Yeah. Let me exactly. dial my conversation. Okay. Exactly. I hit that. For me, I think... Um, Certain things I had one in my head, but I lost it. Completely lost it. What was it? What was it? What was it? I'm right. I don't know. Head. JRPGs probably. Uh, yeah. No, I had a better. Pokemon's. One. Pokemon's. We might have to come back to this. Um, I'm gonna stare into the distance while I figure now this the, out. Now the cat's licking himself in front of us. Yeah, what, are you, what was he eating? <laughs> what a power move! What was he eating? Chicken. chicken. He was eating chicken. Reasonable. A, yeah, uh, that's Good fair. Chicken. That's fair. Um, oh, is that all of my black holes? <laughs> black <laughs> I'll holes. Talk, I'll talk mm-hmm. about black holes for a long time. I gotta have. What was it? I had it. Oh my. Uh, my hatred for college. Mm. My disdain for the uh, cl- um, the modern um, American religious bro. system. Bro, don't get me started. But those are on, more serious topics. Don't get me started on people leaving cups full of water out, bro. Yeah, our cat likes to knock over cups full of water. Every day, bro. <laughs> and die. Oop. And the thing is, the thing is, Chris right? Nolan. So I wake up. I don't have to go to work immediately. Everybody else who wakes up in the house does. They mm-hmm. wake up, go to work. Yeah. Immediately. And so they don't have time to deal with the cups and spilt over water. Mm-hmm. So it's me. And I just stare at the cup. And then I just let off a passive aggressive comment in the group chat. Like, mm-hmm. man, the cup. another <laughs> cup of water. It's on the ground. It's a shame. The water is everywhere. Oh, there's two tonight. Wow. Yeah. Um. Uh, also, definitely a little bit. Now mine's gone. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah, what I mean? you start talking it's about tough. what you were saying, and then now whatever I was thinking of is like completely, completely gone. Mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm um, comedy movies to an extent. I hate comedy movies. He does hate comedies? Like, like even classic. I want to cry. Dude. Like I, when I watch a movie, I want to be punched in the. Like throat. I don't think I could get you to sit down and watch a night at the Roxbury <laughs> with me. Don't give me that look, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, no, probably not. Which is sad because it's a good movie. I did watch Palm Springs though, and that movie was hilarious. But it was also about time travel. And it's also got Andy Samberg. And yeah, it is Andy Samberg. I do love Andy Samberg. I like indie films. I don't know. This is a good-ass question, Fielding. I would it like is. to know. You you do be writing in with the heat. 
constantly. I, I feel like this is just a question that will answer itself over the years. Yeah, as we you'll as find we, out as we do more and more chess. That's a good one. Spencer writes in. Mm-hmm. He says, "What does he say? What's popping, fellers?" Fellers. Long time no mail. Hope the synced up crew and nation are all doing well. The Discord be hella popping. If you aren't in there, then I don't know what you're doing with your life. Yes. Show notes or the description on the YouTube version. You can find our link there to join in. This week's question is about smoking and gaming. <gasps> what? Smoking is still a bit taboo in most places, but do you think that smoking enhances the gameplay experience? Do you smoke certain strains for different games? For me, I think it depends oh. on the genre of game. What do you think he was talking about? Anything that I have to focus we'll on, there. I will tend to stay away so I can focus more. Games like League, though, are actually enhanced by it. This podcast, be boo boo, mm-hmm. Spencer T. So, first Not and foremost, there. I would like to say. What? What were you about to say? You go first. I, what was I, I was just going to say. Um, yeah, obviously. Uh, no, it does not enhance the gameplay experience. <laughs> not at all. Um, I not going to. I appreciate self awareness. I am not going to lie here. I have, of course, partook in the weed and played mm-hmm. games. <gasps> dun, 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 I'm going job. to hell. Um, but I, if I got to play a narrative game, if I got to play mm-hmm. any, really anything, I don't think it enhances the experience. I tend to shy away from video games if I am under mm-hmm. the influence of the Mary Jane. But so there's some games that are exceptions, like Guitar Hero or Just Dance or something, like more social experiments. Mm-hmm. But n- experiments, experiences. But I don't really like to play any. Like yeah. I, I've beat Dragon Age Inquisition, but I still don't want to get high and play it because yeah. I it you know requires more of my attention. Um. So this question is just not on me. I don't I don't like smoking that much, and I I don't think I could ever do it and play a video game. I just get too not focus enough on the game mm-hmm. and then I just be upset with myself and I'm just going to go to sleep. That's yeah. usually what happens. You don't, like, you, you don't want to watch a cutscene and then forget it. Yeah. Shit like that. Uh, not for me. Um, I will say, getting into this question when you said, but do you think smoking enhances the gameplay experience? I was like, what games have I played where you could smoke? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, at GTA, would it enhance it? <laughs> Good like, would it have been a better game if it wasn't there? Yeah. And then I, I realized... He was talking and, about smoking weed and then playing games But then IRL. I think that's almost as good of a question. Yeah, it, you know. Is GTA better because you can get high? Maybe, maybe. Maybe. Let me just say, though, I hate games. Let me not you, say you that, hate <laughs> You hate I games? I hate full games stop? where um, you can, like, drink or smoke, and then your screen just gets wobbly. Yeah. I hate that, bro. You gotta do cool stuff. Red Dead Redemption 2 did cool stuff when you got drunk. Really good mission. It wasn't just yeah. wobbly screen. It was cool shit. But like it, in Valhalla, I stopped doing the drinking games because mm-hmm. I hated the next 15 seconds. Yeah. And it's unreasonable. I'm not drunk for just 15 seconds. Let yeah. me play the next three hours like that if you're really going to do me like yeah, that. Yeah, at least dedicate yourself. Yeah. I don't need 15 seconds of wobbly screen. Mm-hmm. I'm not down for it. So Fair enough. Fair enough. For both answers, no. <laughs> I want a strict Christian game when I play. I One more question from Spencer here. Ayo, hey, how's it hanging, fellas? This week I got a pretty simple question. How's it hanging? Answer that first. That's hanging pretty good, I think. Okay. How's it hanging for you? Fantastic. All right, dope. What games have you dropped completely that you wish you could go back to and revisit? What's the reasoning behind dropping these games? Stay classy. Love me. In parentheses, Spencer. Spencer. So, I'm first and foremost, uh, this list is quite long for me. It's you not know it as is. long for me. It's very long for me because of the nature of the way I experience games and love doing games. And honestly, a lot of the things that are in my life are this type of way. There's certain mm-hmm. exceptions to this rule that I'm about to describe to you. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, my life operates in this fashion. So things for me. OK, so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to make a parallel here mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to the church. Now, look, I don't go to church. I'm not getting mm-hmm, preachy here. Mm-hmm. I had a youth pastor back in the day. I used to go to church. He explained to me like what being faithful right like being having faith was he, he gave me this analogy and i've applied this analogy Preach. to the rest of my life right i'm not preaching i'm not Preach. preaching so his thing was if you want to have faith in god and jesus or whatever now keep in mind i sound flipping about this if you are into that type of stuff like if you are faithful you go to church i have no problem with you that's perfectly fine it's just not for me but he said if you have faith or whatever and you want to keep doing that stuff and you want to be able to not sin and you want to be able to do all that kind of stuff. His analogy that he always used is you got to like your soul, right? You is like a fire and you have to stoke the fire, right? So you have mm-hmm. to constantly stoke the fire and build the fire up. If you want to keep your love for Jesus burning, that was like his whole yeah. stick. And I've applied that, that analogy yeah. to the rest of my life because Amen. that is how I kind of operate. Like, you know, it makes sense um, where I will have these crazy, I'll be so, so into something mm-hmm. so vehemently, like insane. Yeah. And then 
I just drop it so hard, not for lack of want, but just because that's how I am. I will have this burning passion for Magic the Gathering, right, for yeah. three months. And then I spend four or five days not messing around with Magic, doing something else. I'm busy. Something comes up. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like having a hard time getting back and I just can't and it's just not there. And I do the same thing with games. I played Valhalla. I love Valhalla. I think Valhalla is a great game. Got to a certain point of the game. I haven't even come close to beating it. A different game came out. I switched over to the other game. That game took an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. Started playing that game. By the time I finished that game, there wasn't anything else out. But I couldn't bring myself to go back to Valhalla. Not because I didn't want to, but... Well, I guess because well, I didn't want to. Well, but it's like very rarely you put the game down because the game got was, stale. Yeah, or it, it's never because it got stale. It's just my desire to play it is just gone. And it and I tried to explain this to a bunch of my friends. And you guys are starting to understand it more. But like, especially back in the day, like Chance and, and, and all them, they would mm-hmm. just be like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. And I'm like, I, like I'm just not going to force myself to play it because yeah. I actively don't want to. Not because the game is bad, but I just don't. It's not there for me. And a lot of my stuff, stuff in my life is like that. But there are exceptions to that rule the, my passion for chess has held pretty strong for a long time. But again, I do it every single day. My passion. There's for- also things where it's like, yeah. Smash right mm-hmm. where we were so we'll go through for we'll, so long. Then we'll go through stints that we'll, or even we'll just play it one one night mm-hmm. and then not touch it for a yeah. month or two. Right, but that's because more of a social experience. Like everyone yeah. else, for me at least, for me, yeah, uh, everyone else is kind of in. But there, we, we will go through stints where we'll spend like three weeks playing a ton of Smash, or we'll spend mm-hmm. like three weeks doing a ton of this, right? And we'll yeah. do a lot of stuff like that. Like that's just how my life has always been. And there, yeah, you know, like I said, there are exceptions to that rule chess. Um, this podcast is an exception mm-hmm. to that rule, but luckily we got the discord. We got people writing in, we're trying to do stuff all the time and we yeah. do it during more content. So that's keeping it board games. You see that way. I mean, we play ticket to ride every once in a while, but mm-hmm. you'll see like a three week period where we play the shit and I buy yeah. tons of board games and then boom, cold Turkey for a good yeah. couple of weeks. And then we just so, rotate stuff in to the question though. Is there one, you would really like to there, so, revisit so many. Just, well, are, well, what's what's just one you can think of? Because uh, like the most of the top of my head would be like Valhalla because I want to mm-hmm. experience the end of that game, especially with Chance saying it was so good and me knowing mm-hmm. that game is so good. It's just it's sitting there on my yeah. Xbox thing and I highlight it because there's no games out and I just don't want to click it. Oh yeah, but I want like, to finish in, the in game a, in a world where I could hit a button. And the entire experience would just be downloaded into your mind, into your body, <laughs> and you will just have the experience of it without having to waste the time yeah. or put in any effort. Mm-hmm. Valhalla is your choice? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Valhalla is, is the, okay. the most recent one that I can think of, but that this list of games that have fallen into this like area is, yeah. is long. Odyssey was the same exact way. It's, it's more longer games. Like, I'm going deep into Inquisition, mm-hmm. and I'm probably going to be the DLCs, and I'm probably going to put 100 hours into it, but the only reason I'm able to do that there is nothing coming out. Yeah. There's nothing. So I'm all in. But as soon as like indie game, Little Nightmares came out, it was four hours. It, di- it didn't even take a full day away. I went yeah. right back to Inquisition after the fact. And a game comes out that's 15, 20 hours. I got to spend three, four days doing it. I could see myself just completely dropping Inquisition, even mm-hmm. though I bought the DLCs. And I did that stuff because that's just how my brain is. Yeah. And it sucks. I hate it. I it's, mean, at this point, I'm used to it. It's yeah, one of my I, I least it. favorite qualities of myself. I think it's one of my biggest character mm-hmm. flaws. And I hate it, but that's just how I am. So, I have I have no answer for this question, by the way. I very rarely drop games. Drop games completely. You, you be beating games that I don't even think you're really enjoying sometimes. Very rarely does that happen. It or you're not enjoying it a lot. You're kind of just got, like where I got the switch, right? And I yeah. was just like, I want to play as many games as possible. Yeah, you did. And I like 100 percent of Kirby All Stars. No reason for that. <laughs> no, I wasn't having a great time. But I was like, uh, I'm just I'm sitting, bored. Yeah, I'm trying to procrastinate school. Fair enough. Do this. But you know, kind of a separate point. Back to what you were saying. You say it's something about yourself, like you don't like. Mm-mm. Have you tried to like? improve on that yeah it's just like impossible do you really think it's impossible it's like i always compare it to now we're gonna get serious on this podcast yeah i want to i always compare it to because it's back it's the back half nobody cares Mm -hmm. anyone who's still listening they love us so well i don't want to assume but they probably do um i always compare it to because i've had these problems before like with like depression and stuff Mm -hmm. it's been a long fucking time but i've had those issues before and and i've gone to counseling for those things and i compare it to that type of thing because like anyone who's ever had a problem with depression i don't know if you have but anyone who has like an actual serious one uh, understands that like the smallest thing can feel like 
so mountainous like oh, that no, you just can't like and i have this issue with my laundry all the time but it's it's very minor compared to like actual like serious depression yeah. thing but my i see my laundry in that same way like i clean my laundry i do my laundry but folding my laundry feels like this gargantuan task that it just it really isn't yeah and and it's the same thing with going back to video games i will have all these video games and i'll have 12 games downloaded and i know they're all good and i want to try carry in and i want to try this game and i uh, that crypto uh, cardo game just came out and i want to try that and they're all on there and but sometimes i'll just sit there and i'll stare at them on my list and i just cannot bring myself to click them i and i'll be sitting there and i'm like i know i want to play this game but also at the same time i am i so do not it's like yeah. a weird thing where I want to finish Valhalla. I want to click it. I want to finish it. There's no games out right now. And that was the perfect time to go back and finish it. But I just look at it in like almost a sense of disgust of like, I don't want to click this fucking game. You know, it's like a weird thing. And it's just a problem. I've been able to, like, like we said, there's exceptions to this rule. These exceptions are new exceptions. So I've been able to kind of curb that problem in other aspects of my life yeah. but it still applies very aggressively in gaming like in gaming i just don't foresee it happening especially there's always something new to jump to um the podcast also drives me to constantly be playing new stuff mm -hmm. so i think in gaming i probably will never solve that issue for me which i guess for someone who dreams of working in the game industry that's perfect because you always just got to play new shit and drop yeah. as much stuff as possible um after like just finishing it as fast as possible so maybe that's good for me uh but that I just don't think I'll ever be able to curb that problem there. But I've I've been able to curb it elsewhere. I genuinely thought the podcast would not last very long at all because of that problem with myself. Well, I think what helps that problem, right, is when we tie it to um, an experience with another person, right? Yeah, bouncing where, off someone. Yeah, really keeps it going. Well, because it, it's if you did it by yourself, it's a responsibility mm -hmm. that is easier for you to drop because you're by yourself. Yeah, and it's because I'm here. And Jordan. Um, and Jordan. And we got Chance on the Twitters. Yeah, we got it, the, Now we got people in Discord that are constantly asking us for content. It's more than just me doing <clears throat> this for myself now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing of it course, for I'm people. I'm mostly doing it for me. Yeah, because we there's, enjoy it. It's fun. But there's still a element of like, I'm gonna I'm doing this for other people too. And yeah. it's harder for you to drop it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's the same way with like video game experiences too. Most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... Um, if I didn't have people, because like I played Apex the other day, you wouldn't have caught me going back to Apex if it wasn't for Chance and, yeah. and Jordan being like, hey, let's, let's play some Apex. And I had no fucking interest in playing Apex, but I do have interest in playing games with them. Yeah. Um, and so, I yeah, I agree there. Like I said, I guess I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing because the exceptions to that rule in my life are all things that I have something to bounce off of another person with. Yeah. I was able to go to Smash tournaments and be in a Smash for so long because mm -hmm. me and you were into it. I've been playing chess and doing chess puzzles every day and playing a ton of chess because yeah. me and you like to play chess together. In this podcast, we do together. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's a lot of factors. And, you know, like also with chess and, and, and Smash, it also comes down to accessibility, right? Mm -hmm. You come in here, I'm at the table, and all you have to say is, you want to play chess? You want to play chess we real just, quick. I stand up and we're playing a game of chess, right? Yeah. Um, s same thing with how Smash used to be. Mm -hmm. You just turn on the TV and we'd be playing Smash. <laughs> yeah, because it was so all that was on. Th that makes things easier, you know. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of factors to it. I thought it would I just agree. be interesting to dive into. Yeah, that. it's 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 an interesting thing, and I do genuinely think it is my worst character flaw because there are aspects like important yeah. aspects of my life that when this comes into play mm -hmm. is not good and well, not and healthy. I'd, I'd say I'm almost on the complete opposite end of the spectrum <clears throat> almost to my detriment too yeah you I will you be going in <laughs> i'll finish a game and if i like it slightly i'll probably just stay in yeah i'll 100 you be 100 percent reason stuff that doesn't make any fucking sense. just because i enjoy i'm enjoying that game and <laughs> yeah. i don't want to leave it to try out another game that it's i might such, think is okay yeah it's such a know? contrast which i guess works well for the podcast but yeah it's definitely a contrast to how i am because you're not sure. going to play Bowser's Fury, but i 100 percent it yeah that's the, that's <laughs> the, the economy there you know? yeah um, I think I think it's just very interesting mm -hmm. how alike and different we are on that yeah, issue. Yeah, and yeah, that's it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing, and it it bothers me sometimes. But actually, it bothers me all the fucking time, mm -hmm. especially when you know Chance is like, "Bro, just finish the fucking game," and like I want to finish it for myself, but also mm -hmm. for Chance, kind of in a way. But also, mm -hmm. I do not want to turn the game on. You know, it's yeah. such an it's like it's like conflicting things of like. It sucks because I want to talk to you about it. And I want to do this, and it's like a, it's like an actual. It feels monumental, and I know this mm -hmm. sounds nebulous and so not consequential. But no, in but my, I'm sure you're not the only one that feels like. This yeah, either. in in my head, it just feels so gargantuan to be like, mm -hmm. no, I'm not gonna finish the damn game. I just, I can't do it. I'm not gonna do it. And but I also can't bring myself to delete it because there's that that other part. Yeah. So it's like a whole thing. It's it's a whole thing. We have um, a whole extra section yeah. here. 
We do. We do have another section to finish off the podcast. Thank you for that question, Spencer. It actually got us some good, some seriously good dialogue here in a direction I didn't expect yes, it sir. to go. I, I knew I was going to talk about all the games that I couldn't go back and revisit, but hey, got a little serious there. He did. You love to see it though. Wow. You, wow, we, wow. The, the more you, the more you know. So next section of the podcast, what you been playing? It's where we talk about what we've been playing, of course. And we, what have we been playing? Mm-hmm. I just talked about it. Dragon Age Inquisition. It's all I've been playing. I'm like 80 hours well, in. I don't, huh? I'm fact checking you. Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess if you count like Guitar Hero and stuff, but yeah, those yeah, are like the, the casuals things. But I, yeah, I've been playing a ton. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Little Nightmares too. Oh, oh yeah, shit. I play Little Nightmares too. <laughs> Thanks for getting that. Um, if you are interested in my thoughts on Little Nightmares too, which I think the game is is okay, you can go over to youtubecom slash up podcast and check out our brand new impressions video that brand uploaded on Thursday. Spanking new. And we are, it's just me and Jordan. We mic'd up, we mic'd up Jordan for that episode. So if you have any interest in hearing Jordan's voice, um, he is asking me questions about Little Nightmares too. Um, and you can, you can check it out over there. Um, but other than that, yeah, I just been playing Dragon Age Inquisition. It caught me so off guard, got me in it so crazy. I'm 100% in areas I never 100 percent before. Mm-hmm. I'm doing quests I never got before because I just never got so hard, hard into it. So yeah. that's pretty cool. What have you been playing? Um, obviously. Bowser's Fury, we did the impressions yep. video for that. If you have any interest in listening to Mike's thoughts on Bowser's Fury and see us play the little the first mm-hmm. part of it, you could also go over to youtube.com slash synced up podcast and, and check out that video. Go watch it anyways. Yeah. And do that. Support, please. please give us that support. Please go. Um, <laughs> so I've also been playing, of course, 3D World, mm-hmm. the uh, second side to that mm-hmm. disc. First time um, playing it? First time play through. Okay. Really good, bro. There's classic. Been, yeah, it feels like I'm playing so many different types of Mario games in one. Um, and it's really good. The level design. So much, I, I would say, so much love packed into such tiny little yeah. worlds. Just looking at the level design. It's Attention phenomenal. to detail. Because it, it blows my mind how I can spend six minutes in that level, and then I'll have to go run through it just to get the flag thing again. Yeah. And I can run through the level in like, 15 seconds. Yeah. How they fit so much into Compact. A, a short little it's the, thing is impressive. The same type of thing applies i think to captain toad i think that's a good yeah. a good like parallel captain, there captain which toad is also in that game yeah it's like a, a, a little block and they just somehow pack so much in mm-hmm. there and they they do the same with the 3d world levels yeah. as well it's it's phenomenal i'm enjoying it i can tell i love it i'll beat it completely with mario <laughs> yeah i don't know if you're gonna do the other three characters uh probably not okay fair I, I think i can 100 percent it with mario okay and that'll be enough for me all right fair um, enough fair enough but who knows? Maybe I'll beat it and then be like, Fuck I'll get it, I'm that going again. and you'll be like, "Sir, why are you doing this?" And I'll be like, "I can't help it." <laughs> uh, what else have I been playing? I also played Little Nightmares too. Mm-hmm. My thoughts are not in that video, but I've enjoyed it so far. Um, you know, it doesn't feel like as much of an upgrade from the first one as I would like so mm-hmm. far. I don't know what you said at all. I haven't watched the video, but uh, it's good. <laughs> you know, um, what else have I been playing? I feel like there's got to be something else. Maybe no. there's maybe there's not. Yeah, what was I playing before course. Little Nightmares Two came out? Nothing. I beat Valhalla. Yeah, finally. We, but we talked about that last Did week. Did we? Didn't we? I think so. I don't know. Yeah, because you talked about having to. No, I think I said it was extremely close. I don't remember. It, well, anyways, I, I beat Valhalla. <laughs> yeah, I completely regardless. beat Valhalla, and I hundred percented it. Um, yeah, no, because I didn't talk about the glitched achievements on there. Oh yeah, yeah. My last final problem with Valhalla was I didn't have an achievement. That was start the prologue, and it said 100 percent of people had it, and I'm just looking at mine. This is and it hadn't popped. <laughs> nope. And then there was also one for killing all the order, which takes about like 50 hours to do. Yeah, right? And you also did that, and that didn't pop. So I was like, all right, I'm not gonna get all the achievements. I'm just gonna be done with the game. Mm-hmm. So in my book, I 100 percented it, but achievement wise, no. And, and you've been oh, uh, you've been playing Ring Fit Adventure oh, as yeah. well. Ring Fit Adventure, solid game, dude. Mm-hmm. Pretty fun. Yeah, I'm I watched, feeling limber. I watched y'all play it, and I was kind of like, I don't know, maybe. I'm feeling limber, dude. I had a squat just casually. Yeah, I was casually. I was fully out on it, and then I watched y'all play a couple rounds. And I was like, and damn, normally, looks... normally, you you know, the first part of the squat is easy. Mm-hmm. You're getting down there, mm-hmm. getting up's where it gets a little harder. Yeah. And I hit, I I went up, baby. It was smooth. <laughs> oh, I was shit. like, no resistance, no popping <laughs> of the knees. It's uh, a cool game. It is really cool. The the RPG element to it. Kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, leveling up. Honestly, attack defense go up. way cooler than I expected it to be. Yeah. And then, of course, there's a lot of add-ons. There's a lot of cool features. You can check your heart rate. You mm-hmm. can, um, there's the rhythm, rhythm game. game yeah. There's a lot of cool things with it. Um, and for it only being 70 bucks, pretty, as, pretty yeah, solid. Well. Yeah. Um, so if you're looking uh, to start, work out. Work out. And it is a workout. I I was sweating both times. Um, oh, 100%. It looked like y'all was getting that shit. Yeah. Just just the jogging alone is enough yeah. to get you and then all of a sudden you're working on all your muscles and it does mm-hmm. a good job of like using that one ring to mm-hmm. kind of make you do different push stuff different areas. yeah flex your core do your, mm-hmm. your glutes and whatnot a lot of cool stuff in it so it's very uh 
a lot better than I expected to be. Yeah. And I think it's a good purchase. So mm-hmm. I'm going to try and stay on that and do it maybe daily when I have work days. It might be harder. But it's something that's really cool. Mm-hmm. And I think it's interesting. So All right. That's what I've been playing. There you have it, folks. That is it for this episode of the Synced Up Podcast. Thank you for watching or listening. If you are on the audio feed, we would ask you to go over to youtube.com slash Synced Up Podcast and drop us a subscription. We would appreciate that. You don't have to watch any of the YouTube versions of the show. I mean, there is impressions videos over there that are good content. We put a lot of effort into those, just like Mm -hmm. we do with this podcast. Um, And we would appreciate it if you watch those. But if you have no interest and you just want to continue to get the audio feed, I would still ask you to go over there and drop a sub. It would make it easier for us to reach out to people and plug our YouTube channel to ask you to ask them to guest on our show if that subscription count is a little bit higher so we Which would we very much do. we want to get some uh, some more faces on here yep we, um, we want to some interesting people want to start some ideas yeah we got some ideas we want to start some new shows we're thinking about a patreon we're thinking about a lot of stuff a website oh, but next week there's a lot of stuff next week's big yep. week uh, oh yeah sh- i should have sh- shouted that out at the beginning in the housekeeping you can, next you week can do it in post if you wanted to yeah no it's fine um, it's fine these are the people who are going to write it anyway. The people listening this far. Yeah. They're the people who are going to do it. But we are going, next week is going to be our one year anniversary at mm-hmm. the Synced Up Podcast. Dope, yep. cool, crazy, blows my mind. And also, we are going to be playing the Newlyweds game. If you're not familiar with the Newlyweds game, uh, there's this classic game where these people who are Newlyweds, you play, you usually do like two couples and have them compete against each other. And you say, oh, uh, you know, what is your what partner's is, favorite food or this or that or the other? Yeah. And it, we're going to be like, what is Michael's favorite um, fast food restaurant? Yeah. Right? And I'm going to, he's going to write down an answer and I'm going to write down an answer and we're going to compare those answers to see mm-hmm. who gets it right. I don't know how exactly we're going to structure it because obviously we're not newlyweds. Um, and we want some video game related questions in there as well. But we so, want some real life ones yeah, too. So if you have any question ideas for that, Write them in to synced at gmail.com and we might include them and talk about them on the show. Yep. We've also told the people in the Discord about it, haven't we? Maybe. Have we not? I don't think we have. I don't think we have. So we might we might petition the Discord to to write in some questions as well. Um, but that's It'll it. Yeah. Fun. Again, thank you for watching or listening to this episode of the Synced Up Podcast. We very much appreciate you. We love you for going for for listening this deep. We appreciate it. Wow. We will see y'all in the next video. Goodbye. Goodbye. Tell me why I can't get no relief. Tell me why I'm nothing but a heartache. Tell, tell me, me why, why I want to hear you say, hear me say? I want it that tell way. Me. Tell me why. Come on, Mike. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Come on, Mike. Hit it. Tell me why. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-m